Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and tonight we're going to go over the workflow of my latest image of Malat 15. So for those that don't know this is this uh, really interesting structure in the center of the heart nebula and I uh, collected uh, 26 hours total of um, HA03 and uh, S2. So let's get started. So here's the, um, uh, the stacked, uh, raw, unprocessed image of the S2 right here. And uh, here's O3. So this target is one of those targets that actually has good data for all three of those uh, narrowband filters so I mean lots of detail here in the S2 and in the O3 you actually get some nice dust in here and uh, all this O3 you have here in the center is what gives you that nice uh, deep blue look and here's our HA So now, uh, if we step ahead, I did not run dynamic background extraction on any of these um, uh, frames because the whole, the whole image is nebulosity. There is no background. And I wasn't seeing much of a gradient in there. Uh, but I did run deconvolution. And so you can see the deconvolution here. So that's with deconvolution, that's without. Mostly noticeable in the stars, so you can look at those stars with, without. But it also does a nice job of sharpening up these, these uh, clouds, this, all this uh, nebulosity in there. So this time I did run deconvolution against all frames. actually see a hint of the dark circles in here. If you'd like to know more about how I run deconvolution, I recently posted a video on my YouTube channel specifically on deconvolution. So if you're interested in this, you know, please like the video, check out that video, uh, and uh, I certainly would appreciate a subscription. But yeah, this is pretty cool because you can actually get some nice dust in the O3 on this target. We'll go back to S2, and yeah. So, I mean, S2 always seems to have the uh, the most star bloat. You know, I'm not sure if it's my filter. It could be that uh, I think I got a lot of this data while it was lower to the horizon. I usually save the O3 for when there's no moon up and the target is high, because O3 tends to be uh, diffracted the most. Uh, so, my S2 suffers sometimes from it, but I mean, still, deconvolution did a nice job on the stars. So, uh, after deconvolution, I uh, loaded them all up, combined them using the LRGB combination tool, and uh, this is what you get. So, I'll do an auto stretch uh, without linking the RGB channels. That's our combined image. So, I mean, right off the bat, the color is actually pretty nice. Uh, next, I remove the stars, which is pretty typical here. And uh, Star Exterminator is what I use, and it did a fantastic job. I notice uh, Star Exterminator still kind of struggles a bit on the wide field shots that have a ton of stars in them. Uh, it's gotten better with the with the updated AI, uh, but uh, on this uh, on um, uh, smaller image scales with the larger scopes it, it does a fantastic job I mean, you're not seeing any any real artifacts I mean there's a couple of them in there but it's not bad not bad at all there we go so you can see all right we had something there and there was the stars over there but anyway so let me just step through uh, each of the processing steps that I did basically from this point forward, is mostly curves work. So I believe, yeah, without the stars, I just use the auto stretch. 
uh, and got this. Notice how the auto stretch, uh, the colors changed a little bit with the unlinked auto stretch once you got all those magenta stars off the picture. And uh, auto stretch, uh, some people feel it's a little too harsh or a little bit too much, but when you remove the stars, I think it works really good. I mean, nothing here is blown out. Uh, so auto stretch with the unlinked channel works really well. So inverting, and we know what we're doing here. We're getting rid of some of this little magenta stuff that's hiding in there. All right, we got all those yellows, so subtracting green. All right, so we got the green here. You guys know I like my green, uh, but we'll get some of it back. So you can't see it, but there's some in there. Now we start working um, uh, saturation. I'm putting a frame here, so I'm doing some work in here. Probably, yeah, some slight curve work in this area, so I'm not impacting the outer area too much. We're inverting again. Now, you guys know that, that have been following, following me knows what's coming up next, right? So what I like to do is try to get a little bit of a red color sometimes in this yellow uh, but this time I, I to be honest I'm not entirely a hundred percent on the results I got so I mean I don't know how, do, how does this look we'll come back to it I may process this again and maybe handle this area a little bit differently I mean usually when you see them it, it looks like this the yellow or gold I wanted something a little bit different but I'm a concern that maybe it um, stands out too much from the background. I don't know. But I decided to stick with it. More saturation, more curves. I'm starting to see some of that green come out. And I think this is where I pretty much ended up with. So after getting to this point, I, I did work it a good bit more with a lot of subtle curves work uh, and some using range masks. So. I made a copy of it, and I often do this to kind of, uh, uh, it, it's, it's like, um, it's like making a snapshot, if you're familiar with virtual machines. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, right, so here's some of the masks I use to give you an idea. Obviously, what I'm trying to do here is tweak just the, 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 the lot, and here I'm doing some, some of the brighter areas here. I think what I was trying to do over here is that I'm, I'm trying to be conscientious of not getting the background too dark while working in the center. So that sort of helps. So we'll just step through these. So yeah, you see that? You can see where I... I oh, you know what? I use the uh, Enhanced Dark Structure script for that part. I don't use that script too often. Um, I feel like it, it goes a little bit... Uh, uh, too too far sometimes, but uh, it worked out well this time. So this is the script dark structure enhance And uh, yep yeah, some more Curves work you could tell I wasn't too sure about all this so Kept playing with the different uh, colors in there uh, I've been thinking about doing a video just on color management. I have some ideas on how to do that, and I think that might be a, a fun fun and useful video. Uh, really useful for this narrowband stuff, right? Because uh, we're, we're dealing with um, false color anyway, and so uh, with the narrowband stuff, uh, you can take a lot of artistic license when it comes to colors sometimes. All right, so anyway, I think this is the final starless version. Uh, this is where I ended up with. Okay, so uh, then I moved over to a different workspace to give myself a clean area to work with. And um, I decided to work on the stars. So here's the stars. And you can see I'm trying to stretch it. Uh, but I was running into an issue where these really bright stars were getting a little bit too bright and I didn't want to uh, I still wanted to have some background stars some of the smaller ones in there so what I did is I actually used a mask so I did some stretching some initial stretching and let's see 
Is that the mask? Yeah. So this is the mask that I created after some initial stretching. Uh, basically so that I could keep stretching using the histogram while not applying that stretch to some of these brighter stars. So, I mean, if you remember, if we go back here and look at... Where's that image? If we look at here, I mean, look how bloated these stars look. I mean, you can really see, I mean, a lot of it's coming from the, uh, from the S2 filter. But I mean, like, you got this tight area here, and if, if you zoom out a bit, it almost looks like one star. So, I mean, this is a result of our atmosphere, right, and our optics distorting the, the stars and exaggerating the size of the stars. If you look at Hubble pictures, the stars are tiny pinpricks. So they, they should not look this big. And I don't, I, I like the stars, but I don't like it when the stars are so big that they take away from the whole image. I guess that's the appeal of starless images. It's nice to be able to see all the structure and the nebulosity without the stars, but starless somehow look artificial to me. So my goal is to try and really tighten up the stars so that they're still there, but they're not, they're not taking focus away from the image. So anyway, I'll step through what I did with these stars. So you can see that with the mask applied, I was able to stretch more and pull out more of these smaller stars without growing the size of these bigger stars. And now I'm messing with the uh, colors of the stars, taking the uh, magenta stars out. And uh, one little trick for helping with the color of the stars, I mean, this is, this is uh, where I boost the saturation. But if you're having trouble, even with narrowband stars, um, getting a nice distribution of color. I mean, you can actually use the color calibration. You just grab that and drop it right on there and see if that helps with the star colors. I've been surprised how sometimes that that does a trick because you get stuck between getting some of these weird hues and you subtract the green and then uh, then that brings some of the magenta back and, and you start getting going round and round and, and before you know it all your stars are just white and you've lost all the color. So color, uh, uh, working color calibration in there sometimes really does does a trick. Alright so anyway uh, this is what I ended up with right here. Now ignore the numbers image 48 image 41 even though this has a um, this is a, a even though this has a higher number, this is actually what I ended up with. Uh, note the stars. Maybe the stars are a little bit too sharp, but I mean, in particular, I was really happy with the way this area came out. Right, you can see the individual stars now. I mean, they still look bloated when I zoom in, but this, this looks a lot better. And notice the artifacts from Star Exterminator. I mean, you can see a hint of it here. You can see maybe a little bit over there, but look how far you have to pixel peep to, to see this. So I think this, the stars worked out pretty well. But I wasn't quite done with the image. Um, and again, you know I love my green, but I also like deep blues. So what I wanted to do is pull some of the green out of here, but keep it in this yellow area. So I use a color mask. Uh, this is a blue color mask, and then I made a range mask out of that. And then by doing that, I took some of the uh, green out of the bluish areas. Not too much, but I wanted to get some of the deep blue. So this, at least for now, is the final image. I'm still not 100% sold on the color in here. So, I don't know. I'd love to hear what you guys think. What do you think of the, the color selection here? And uh, just for fun, uh, earlier in the year I did shoot the Heart Nebula with my 70mm scope. And so it's kind of cool to see the, the comparison. Same object, right? So on the left, Celestron Edge, 8-inch uh, edge with uh, ASI 294 mono and the wide field shot is with the 70 millimeter scope 
336 millimeter focal length and the ASI 1600. I think the 70 millimeter scope actually held up pretty well when you zoom in here. But, you know, you get in really close and, and you can definitely see, you know, aperture wounds here. That's why you get a bigger scope, right? You get the bigger scope so you can get in nice and close and uh, pull in some extra resolution of these cool objects. But you still need the little scope to get the wide field shot, right? I mean, it'd be awesome if I could do a mosaic and get this whole thing with the edge, but what would that be, like 16 panels and then 20 hours per panel? You'd, you'd, never, you'd never have the time in one year to do it. But anyway, so that's what I got. Uh, if you like this, please uh, comment, like the video, subscribe. I've got plenty more videos planned ahead. And uh, clear skies.